Hey everybody, it's Alexander Dahl with Manifest Vitality once again. Uh, so I did go ahead and start booking for the next wave of interviews. So I have several that I've already conducted and ready to um, start publishing the ones that I've done. Uh, I'm going to continue to edit the ones that I've been doing. I have them pretty much booked out every day for the next uh, couple weeks. And so it'll probably be into maybe even early July before we actually get all of them published. Um, but without further ado, uh, here you go. Here's the first one. All right. So I'm currently on the phone with Carlos. He's one of the musicians that reached out about the interview series. So I'm going to go ahead and give him a chance to introduce himself. Hey, how you doing? This is uh, Carlos Cruz. I'm with the, the band Stonebreed. Awesome. So I always like to start at the beginning. Um, when was it that you kind of first identified music and then you kind of had that bug in you that made you realize that you wanted to have music as a part of your life? Oh man, I was like super early uh, in in life. I mean, I remember, you know, being four, five, six years old. I think I got a guitar like at, at age four for my, or actually like age two or three was my very first guitar. It was like a little Mickey Mouse guitar, and <laughs> I used to like li I watch Elvis on on TV and stuff like that. And uh, you know, my mom would listen to the AM radio, and me and my little sister would be riding the back of her uh, station wagon. You know, listening to all the old AM Gold, you know, hits back in the, you know, early early seventies and stuff like that. So, um, you know, I, I've always been a big fan of music, and then I guess when I got to be about nine, ten years old, I I, I got more into you know, I, I playing the guitar and singing and stuff like that. Awesome. So uh, at about that age, uh, you know, you're in school. Were you a part of like any of the like school music curriculum, or were you doing it like outside of school? Yeah, it was more outside of school. Um, you know, we, we, I didn't really have like a music class or anything. Or I was never a member of like band or marching band or none of that. It was just all outside of school, basically. Sure. And were you kind of like self-teaching yourself guitar or were you taking lessons for it? No, never took lessons before. Um, just self, you know, self-teaching my guitar. I remember buying a, a, a Eagles uh, book one time of like easy chords by the band, the Eagles. And mm -hmm learned a couple of Eagles tunes and learned how to play acoustic guitar. And then I, uh, you know, once I learned six or seven chords, I was able to write a few uh, songs of my own and stuff like that. So. Sure. Definitely. So um, on that note, once you did kind of get to the point where, you know, you started writing your own music, um, did you kind of look at putting a band together? Did you have kind of like the perfect idea for the type of band you wanted or was it more or less you were just kind of, solo writing to see like how how well you could get at writing well you know i've always wanted to be in a rock band you know ever since really really early age um and i i noticed that when i was really young in school that like all the the, the girls like they, they liked all the teenage idol kids like the donny osmonds and the mm -hmm. david cassidy's and the leaf garrett's and all those you know pin-up kids from the 70s mm -hmm, and sure. You know, so I was like, well, man, you know, that's what the chicks like. So, you know, that's that's kind of what I should do. So mm -hmm. I started trying to, you know, emulate some of the stuff that I saw going on at that point with those kind of people. And then I got a little older to start listening to a little bit more rock and roll. And I figured, you know, I, I should get in a band. So I actually started being a drummer before I was a rock singer. Mm -hmm. And uh, I bought a drum kit and started playing drums and played a little bit of guitar. But then I realized that. You know, the drummer has to haul a whole lot of equipment, and by the time <laughs> yeah. he's done, the, by the time he's done, you know, with his equipment, at the end of the night, the singer's already off with the girls. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I had to give up the drums, man, and go to being being the singer. Man. So. Sure, definitely. So, uh, following that, like, you know, what was it that kind of brought you to the next level? And you're you were committed to the idea of putting a band together starting to do shows and writing. What was the process of like for you to uh, get like your first band together? And then how did that evolve into, you know, where you currently are? Well, you know, I think like when I was first, you know, first starting out, I was in Detroit, Michigan. And of course, like most people, you know, you get some high school buddies together and you play and, you know, we played like the local snack and rack arcade and, and, and the um, high school talent show and, you know stuff like that, and then you get you get you progress a little bit, get a little older, you start doing a couple of little you know uh, bar gigs, backyard parties, mm -hmm. you know stuff like that. So um, once you get to that level, then you you know you you want to start writing your own music. You know everyone mm -hmm. starts out playing other people's music. Um, so 
once you like kind of, it, it's almost like a, a like a ladder. You kind of go step by step. You know, yeah. Once you get to that next step, you start writing your own music, and then you want to start recording and mm-hmm. you know playing bigger places. And then then the next step is, hey, I got to get a record label, and mm-hmm. you know, so it's just a long process. But you know, you just got to take it step by step and take each hurdle as it comes, man. Sure, definitely. And what were some of those like early uh, seminal moments for you, like writing in kind of like, for lack of a better term, like a, the garage band scenario? Um, you know, did you get along with the people that you're writing with? And, you know, how did you kind of identify the the voice that you wanted to have the the content that you wanted to write about? Um, well, I've always been, you know, like a big 80s, you know, lover. Um I always but were some of my big influences were like David Lee Roth and Van Halen as far as the way he's a front man. I always liked the band Aerosmith because they were a you know powerhouse rhythm and blues hard rock band. Mm-hmm. Great lead singer, two powerful guitar players. So I always kind of wanted a either a real strong five piece band or a four piece band like that, you know, with you know, just lead singer out front type of deal. Um, you know, obviously being in a band is like being in relationships, mm-hmm. you know, with, it's like having four or five girlfriends at one time. So that's hard to handle. Right. So, and you're not having sex with them. <laughs> right. You get along with some, you know, and, and, and some you, you, you have spats with and arguments with, but for the most part, I've enjoyed, you know, writing, performing, recording with, with everybody that I've ever had the pleasure of, you know, doing so my whole entire career. And thank God. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's a great process. You I mean, it's a lot of fun and, and I totally hundred percent enjoy doing what I do. Awesome. So tell me about how Stonebreed came together. Well, I, you know, I was playing in bands all over the country. And then I, I had, I decided to move back to California for my job. And I, I decided as soon as I came back to California, I needed to get back a band together. You know, even, I don't even care if I was just playing on the weekends or whatever, you know, I just, I needed to play music. It's in, it's in my blood. So I did what most people do. I started, you know, placing ads on Craigslist, looking for a guitar player, looking for a drummer. Do you guys want to put a band together? Mm -hmm. Who wants to jam? You know, here's my influences. I like Aerosmith. I like Van Halen. I like Leonard Skinner. I like Molly Hatchet. You know, I get guys calling me up and we talk and then we just kind of, you know, figure out if we click or not. So then, you know, we, we pick a rehearsal day and here, let's learn these four cover songs. Okay. Boom, let's come in next Saturday at three o'clock. And, you know, I got a drummer lined up, bass player. We come in, we meet, we start playing. Mm-hmm. You know, all four of you guys might click from the beginning, or you and a guitar player might be like, like, well, the bass player was all right, but the drummer kind of sucks. So let's look around for another drummer. So then you just kind of build from there and keep talking. Once you, you know, find the right members, then you just start working from there and, and, and just sure. build. You know, like I said, you got to get your set list. You go from writing covers to originals and, You know, you go from 30 minutes to 45 minutes Mm that, you know, you just got to keep progressing and keep progressing, basically. Sure. And so what was it like once you actually got down to writing the originals and then uh, picking a studio? Uh, Did you uh, seek out like a professional studio or did one of the band members have like an independent uh, recording uh, option? Uh, How was that process? Oh, man. Well, I've been doing recordings for a long time. I mean, I remember. First starting out, I had like a little four track recorder, man. I'd be up in my grandma's base. I'm in my grandma's attic upstairs, you know, like with headphones on. And, you know, when you're recording and singing your vocals into a little four track recorder, you have a microphone and headphones on, and no one can hear the music. All you can hear is just you screaming in the attic, you know? So, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, so, you know, like the same thing, that's progression. You get a little better stuff, and, and you start, you know, once you start writing your music, you go, okay, I got to get a, a little better studio. And, you know, obviously your main goal is you, you, everybody wants to go out and get a real big time producer, a big studio, but a lot of people don't have the budget for that. Mm-hmm. A lot of people got to start out smaller. So my, my, my first, my first recordings I did were, you know, small demos at very uh, low budget recording studios. And then as you progress and get better and it's album after album, you know, we, I got to the point where I signed a record deal and got, got, got to record in a big professional, um, studio and i got to even pick the producer that i wanted then i had a producer that in mind that i produced a bunch of records that you know i liked and knew who he was and talked to label and let me pick that producer so it's it's the same thing it's a progression and 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 it it evolves you just gotta you know the the more you do it the the next step up the next step up so like i said i've recorded everywhere from a four track in my grandma's attic to professional recording studio with, with a big time producer Cool. At all points in between, like the last couple of singles, our guitar player, 
uh, we recorded it at his house and, and it came out just as good as if, you know, we went and did it in a big studio because he's got all the tricks and gadgets and all that good stuff. And he's got all the computerized stuff that makes it sound like a pro studio these days. So mm. it's evolution, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So what are uh, a couple of like your favorite stories that always come to mind of whether it be in the studio, practicing, touring, what are some really powerful moments that you've encountered? Oh man, just so many. I don't have to write a whole book about it, but I mean, <laughs> I mean, when you, when you grow up listening to rock and roll, and you, you know, you idolize somebody's, you know, bands in your 14, 15, 16. And then, you know, you get in your 20s and, and, and you start playing in bands. And all of a sudden you're you're opening for these guys, you know, and, and you're sharing the stage with these guys. And, you know, you're you're selling T-shirts with with these guys at the at the night. And these people want to take the picture with you and the same guys that you, 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 you know, were idolizing just five, six, seven years ago type of thing. And that's that's like a real surreal moment, you know, in life when you you know, like you're, you're there, you're there. You're like, man, you know, I, you know, I used to be in the garage. Now I'm here, here on stage, you know, mm -hmm. at the house of blues, a sold out show, 1200 people opening for, you know, uh, you know, whoever, great white or somebody, you know, and mm -hmm. it, 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 it's a, it's a, it's a pretty cool feeling like that. And as far as, you know, stories go, I mean, I do remember one time I was, you know, I live in California. We, we do a lot of shows. I, I know a lot of rock stars, so I'm not really one to, get starstruck but i was we were playing the show we were opening for uh my buddy uh bobby is the drummer for a uh, uh, rat from the 80s and mm -hmm. we were doing a show a few years back <clears throat> opening for rat and i was on stage and i was right in the middle of a song and uh there's there a part where the guitar you know goes into a lead so there's like a maybe a 20 30 second 20 second break where the lead goes where i don't have to sing mm -hmm. so i i stop singing the lead starts to go on i look over to my left and i see the monitor board and when i look at the monitor board i see nikki six from motley crew standing there give me the thumbs up nice and at that point i just froze he's a friend of you know rats and he came to see those guys and we were the opening band but he was checking out our our set he was like right there on the side of the stage giving us the thumbs up well mm -hmm. since i looked over i got starstruck i mean i <laughs> forgot where i was at man i forgot the lyrics to the song i forgot it was even on stage mm. it was a crazy moment for me but luckily i i gained composure and right before i had to kick back in the song i remembered the lyrics and mm -hmm. everything went fine and got to meet him after the show and it was cool like that but i don't know just kind of meeting some of your mm -hmm. childhood heroes and you know another thing that i find is amazing is is i get to travel a lot you know i, I just got them booking some shows today I'm going to go back up to Seattle. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, uh, Salt Lake City mm -hmm. and uh, Denver and uh, Phoenix and Tucson. And, you know, it, it, it's a great thing to, to be able to travel and get paid for it. I mean, you know, I get to go travel around and be on vacation and do a couple of shows. And it's not costing me a lot of money out of my pocket because I'm actually getting paid to show up and play these shows and stuff like that. So yeah, that's, that's awesome. another really kind of cool thing about about this, man. You get to. You get to travel and meet people and see people and have fun, man, you know? Well, and on top of that, what, when I was uh, looking up some of your media, I saw that you guys uh, played at NAM last year. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we well, you know, we live in Hollywood, so to be honest with you, we've played at NAM probably the last seven or eight years in a row. Okay. Um, various shows, um, you know, most of them we play, like, I don't know, a couple of years ago, we, we did a show at Rat and Lita Ford and it was sold out. We did another show at like Warrant mm -hmm. and Lita Ford and it was sold out, you know, the, the NAM weekend. So uh, we normally get pretty lucky and, and get to open for some some pretty big names at, during NAM week. And we've, we've done like with L.A. Guns and Uli Jean Rob and stuff like that. So awesome. luckily for us living in L.A., we, we got to. We got a hookup for the NAM shows. <laughs> so, how would you say that the NAM attendance last year compared to previous years? Well, I think it was pretty sucky last year because they, they no one showed up because they didn't have it. <laughs> <laughs> right. But the year before that, um, you know, I don't know. It, it's it's been pretty packed every single year. I mean, every year it's it's really packed. Um, I can't really sit there and go one year was way more packed than last year. I mean, it's just. Every year I go, it seems like it's the same. You can't move and you can't hardly walk in there. It's packed. <laughs> sure, definitely. So I want to give you the chance to put out uh, like your social media links, uh, where people can uh, click on you and listen to your stuff. Okay. 
Yeah, we have obviously have you know obviously a uh, website www.stonebreed.com. We're on all social media as far as like Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, you know, TikTok, AsianHookers.com, you know, whatever. <laughs> you can find us uh, YouTube, uh, Reverb Nation. You can play our music. We're all over Spotify, Pandora, um, and all that stuff. So I mean, all you got to do is just Google us, and you can find us everywhere. Sure, definitely. And so I like to give the person I'm interviewing uh, like the last word. So a message that you want to put out that you feel you connect with. Well, I just want to say, I, first of all, I appreciate you, uh, you know, spending the time and talking with me um, here. And I just want to say anybody that's listening, you know, if you get a, get a couple minutes, check us out. You know, go to the website, listen to some music. You never know. You might like it. If you like good old school hard rock and roll, with maybe a little southern metal kick to it. Um, you can hear my influences in the music that we, we perform. You know, I, like I said, I grew up listening to Aerosmith, Van Halen, a lot of the 80s rock, a lot of the Southern rock, you know, Molly Hatchet, Leonard Skinner. So um, if you like any of that kind of stuff, you know, drinking beer, partying down, smoking weed, hanging out with chicks, driving fast in cars, stuff like that, you, you, you'll like our music. So check us out, stonebreed.com. <laughs>